say to you that being blessed has to deal with more than uh, anything that is carnal. That means that that pertains to the flesh. And unfortunately in the world, many people when they talk about being blessed and they make reference to being blessed, it, it ends up being in material things and or carnal areas of their life. But I want us to understand very biblically that the term bless has little to do with anything that is material or that is carnal. Praise the Lord. In fact, by definition, the term bless it means that which is large and lengthy. It also means to make happy. Right. Praise the Lord. That that is large, that that is lengthy. In the Hebrew, it is the word ashray. This word deals with that that is divine, spiritual and heavenly. I have made reference to this when teaching on this term bless, that when you look at the Beatitudes, Lord have mercy, everybody say Beatitudes. Beatitudes. Let's say it, say it slow, Beatitudes. B, because being blessed, it might be a good thing to give yourself a note, howsoever you choose to do that, but being blessed has a great deal to do with your attitude and spirit. Praise the Lord. For example, let's go to Matthew 5. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Praise the Lord. Just to place emphasis on this term being blessed. And this term blessed, we're going to see its significance in our lives as it relates to being tempted. Our tests, our trials, tribulations. All right, Matthew 5, 1, and I want us to just note this word blessed. Let's read a few verses here. 5 and 1, beginning, read. Amen. Seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying. So one of the things I want to point out here before we go into these verses is the fact that we need to be taught what it means to be blessed. You will notice in verse 2, he opened his mouth and taught them, taught them. And the purpose of teaching is to endow knowledge. Because God wants us to know. And one of the things that he wants us to know is what it truly means to be blessed. He opened his mouth and taught them saying, verse three, yes, read. Blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now I want you to notice how we take off, uh, we're talking about spirit. Note that, blessed are the poor in spirit. We are beyond anything material. Not blessed are those that have no money. <laughs> so we're not talking about even in the carnal realm. This is a good point in time in this service tonight to elevate your minds. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those that recognize they have a need of God in their spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. What about it? Theirs is the what? So you have spirit in the verse. Then you have theirs is the kingdom of what? Heaven. So notice again as we talk as we talk about being blessed, this is the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing starts out with earthly, material, fleshly, carnal things. 
because in biblical context, what it means to be blessed really has nothing to do with what is material, what is carnal. You can see what bad shape then, mentally and spiritually, uh, the world is in. And unfortunately, many in the visible church are in bad shape because the only way that they identify or make reference to blessings oftentimes is in the areas of material things, and carnal things. Now, let's go further here uh, through a few more verses so we can make a point and go further. Verse four says, Blessed are they that mourn, they shall be confident. Verse five, Blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the earth. Verse six, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for, verse seven, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, verse eight. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, verse nine. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God, verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted, Righteousness say, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you. Now we're starting to deal with some tests and trials. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you. Yes. Persecute you. Talk about you, shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Well, let's get to 12 verse and we'll we'll make our points. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. All right. So when we look at being blessed in the teaching of Jesus, now the Beatitudes, as uh, these verses are called, are really uh, defined as blessings. The term Beatitudes means the blessings, the blessings. But I want to uh, raise our focus by dissecting the word Beatitudes. Let's say it slow again. Be attitude. Let's say it again. Be attitudes. All right. In other words, this is addressing uh, the way we need to be. The attitude that we need to have. The be attitudes. In other words, this is the way to be. Thus, this is the way to be blessed. All right. Poor in spirit. They did more. Me, hunger and thirst after righteousness, merciful, pure in heart, peacemakers. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. All right, can I say something here? Not everything that we might face in life is for righteousness' sake. Some things may be uh, because of consequences to wrong choices that we made. Is that all right? It's important for us to understand. Let's make sure we understand uh, the scripture. He did not say blessed are they which are persecuted, period. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Not under every circumstance. Not under all conditions do I obtain the blessing of God just because I'm persecuted. Is it for righteousness sake? Becomes the key. All right, so let's get back to James again now so that we understand in verse number 12, James 1, verse number 12, here again. And if you're online with us here tonight, again, we welcome you, amen, as we're dealing with the subject, overcoming temptations. All right, now, notice the word of the Lord says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, all right? What does it mean to endure? 
Does anybody know what it means to endure? Raise your hand if you know the term endure. What does that term mean, endure? And everybody don't have to speak at once, but what does that term mean to endure? Just raise your hand and I'll recognize you. What does it mean to endure? The word of the Lord speaks to us and gives us instruction what is meant. Brother Maxwell. To suffer. To suffer. All right. Good. Anyone else? Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. What are we talking about? Blessed is the man that endures. Sister Kathy? To last through. To last through. All right. Anybody else? And we'll move on. Anybody else? Help me out. Sister Watson. To withstand, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, to suffer, to last through, to withstand. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. All right, yes ma'am, Sister Amber. To take a licking and keep on ticking. All right. Modern terminology, praise the Lord, to keep take a licking and to just keep on ticking. All right. Now, here's what I feel that the Lord wants his people to be encouraged with here tonight. You're blessed not just when temptations come, listen carefully to the word, but when you can endure the temptation. You see, it's inevitable that temptations are going to come, and we'll pick that up momentarily. It's inevitable that they will come. The question is, can I endure? Now, let's get another verse to help us there. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. And let's pick up a verse. Verse 13. Verse 12 and 13. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12 and 13. Now, the first word in the lesson tonight is the term bless. Everybody say bless. Bless. All right. Now, to bless again, it means to make happy. It means what is long and lasting, it means that that is of God, that that is spiritual and heavenly. All right, let's note what Jesus says in this passage of scripture. Let's read verse 12 and 13. And because, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And uh, that is a lesson that we need to address all by itself. Because iniquity, lawlessness, shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And let me just uh, give you a little bit of something to chew on for now. Because again, this is a lesson by itself. Because iniquity shall abound, because sin separates us, number one, from God, who himself is love. Let me say it again. Sin separates us from God. And iniquity is just one of the sin terms, and specifically that term of sin, iniquity, means lawlessness. Without government, it means self-will. When people are selfish, they will mistreat one another. Can I get a witness in the house? I want you to hear the word. That's a lesson by itself, and uh, perhaps the Lord will allow us to get to it at some point. But know what Jesus said, because iniquity shall abound. In other words, sin is going to get really out of hand. And uh, the Apostle Paul picks it up and notice what he says as uh, he, uh, he writes to his son Timothy in the gospel. 
he says that uh, evil men and seducers shall something. Wax what? Worse and worse. Jesus is given a prophecy that because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That means we're going to have some, some problems. We're going to have some tests. We're going to have some trials to go through if this happens. Now, know what he says behind it in the 13th verse. Read. But he that shall endure unto the end. All right. I am magnifying the point from James, which is our base tonight, by the way. Uh, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. God give us the power to endure. Uh, I remember from years ago, growing up as a boy in church, and uh, our own former pastor, and sometimes other pastors. Many of them are gone to sleep now, but they went in their preaching and teaching talk about how as saints of God, we need staying power. How many of y'all remember that? We need staying power. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Now, if you keep in note, uh, I, you don't have to turn there, but I want you to make a reference to Matthew chapter number 13. There we have the parable of the sower. And there are four types of soil. And specifically, the reference point of the parable is to show that there are four different types of hearers of the word. One of those uh, descriptions uh, of the soil is that that, that falls uh, by the wayside. And the Bible talks about there's the stony ground, there's the wayside, there's that that falls among thorns, and there's that that falls upon the good ground. But Jesus talks about in one of the parables how uh, that when temptation comes, they're able to endure for a while. But by and by, when the word comes, they immediately rejoice. But when temptation comes, are y'all listening tonight? By and by, they are offended, and they end up withering away, becoming unfruitful. So again, even in the 13th chapter, just on this point of enduring temptation, ladies and gentlemen, it is important that we understand our need to be able to endure. And God does not leave you and I alone as his children. When it comes to being able to endure or handle our temptations. If you appreciate that tonight, would you take a moment and thank the Lord for that? Thank the Lord that he does not leave us powerless or by ourselves when it comes to being able to endure or handle our temptations. All right. The next point I want to make is basically a brief review so that we understand that when it comes to temptations, there are two types. There are two types of temptation. The first one is positive temptation. This deals with being proven, being tested, and being qualified for. Again, positive temptation there's a positive side of temptation. I want us to get it again here tonight. The positive temptation deals with being proven, being tested, and being quali qualified for, such as being tested in school in order for you to pass your class or pass to your next level, which is a higher level, or taking a test for a work or a job. In other words, being able to qualify for it. This is positive temptation. Praise the Lord. I was reading uh, about Abraham and how the Lord tested Abraham when he instructed him to take Isaac, his son, 
to be offered as a sacrifice. How many of y'all familiar with that? The book of Genesis. That was a test being proven. Now, that was not a negative temptation. That happens to be uh, the other temptation. First one is positive temptation. Again, which deals with being proven, tested, and being qualified for. All right, let's now look at James chapter 1, and let's read verse 2 and verse 4. Praise God. Praise God. Verse 2 through verse 4 of James chapter 1. And I want to ask everybody to read aloud these verses. Let's read. My brethren, count in all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. Verse 4. But let patience have her what? Perfect work that you may be perfect or complete and entire, wanting or lacking nothing. Praise the Lord. This is what God gives us as it relates to positive temptation. All right. Negative temptation is the second area. Again, two types of temptation. First one is positive. Second one, negative. What do we mean by negative temptation? This deals with being enticed to evil. Negative temptation deals with that that entices to evil. Let's know 13, verse 13, in the book of James, chapter 1, Let's read three verses here, verse 13, 14, and 15. So we got to deal with both sides, and we're going to go just a little bit deeper after we read these verses and uh, expound upon it a bit. Verse 13 through 15 now, let's read it out. All right, let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Now this is important that you catch this next part because this gives you the context of what is meant by being tempted of God. But God cannot be tempted with evil. evil. God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. And for explanation, you would add at the end of that verse with evil, neither tempted he any man with evil. This is the context. When you read it here, this is addressing negative temptation. So there are two types of temptation. Positive temptation, again, deals with being proven, tested, and being qualified for. The way you understand positive temptation is like, I got a test I've got to take at school. It's necessary for me to pass the class. It's necessary for me to be able to pass the grade. I've got to take a test for this job that I'm trying to get. We're talking about being proven or tested to qualify for it. That's positive temptation. Meant to help you. Meant to qualify you. All right. Let's go just a bit further into our lesson as we listen to what God has to tell us about how we overcome temptations. Now, so the next point that I want to make to us is that there are instructions, thank God, for overcoming temptation. There are instructions for overcoming temptation. What did I just say? All right. Now, that means if there are instructions, that means that we need to follow. We need to follow those instructions. Nobody is just an automatic overcomer. And just so that we all can understand very emphatically tonight, the Word of God is our manual of instruction. The Word of God. You see, 
It is our manual of instruction. Praise the Lord. We, 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 we cannot succeed in being overcomers as children of God. Can I teach to us tonight? None of us can succeed as overcomers without following God. You see, if we resort to taking matters, God help us tonight, in our own hand, then we will fail at being overcomers. And let me just say to all of us here tonight, as I was saying earlier, uh, it's easy to resort to give it in to the way we feel. Lord, help us here. And Lord, help me teach tonight. When we only practice operating our lives by how we feel, it's like being on a hill with, in an automobile, having no power to turn the engine on, no ignition, no gasoline. You do not need any power to go down. I'm going to say that again. You got me there, Brother Master. You don't need power to go down. You need power to go up. Now, for the third week, uh, God has really been, been really infusing my mind and stirring my spirit to remind his people why he gave us the Holy Ghost. Whoever knows what this verse is, I want you to help me when I call it out. Acts 1 and 8 says, but ye shall receive what? Power. Come on, help me shout power tonight. Sound good. Shout it one more time. Power. Ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Right. So I want us to be reminded again the third week that God gave us the Holy Ghost to give us power. Right. Amen. Not to be powerless. Not so that we become prey or weaklings to our circumstances and our issues. You've got power to overcome. Praise the Lord. Can I say it again? As a child of God, you need to know, you need to understand that as a child of God, you have been given the power to overcome. But we must follow God's instructions. Praise the Lord. If you don't believe it, go ask Samson. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Spirit of God may be there, but now if you don't follow the instruction, God will deactivate the power. Let the church shout hallelujah. Now, would you give God praise for that truth? That, that, that blesses you more than you realize it does. Why do many a child of God feel like they don't have the Holy Ghost? I'll tell you why. If you've been here while in church, you know I've taught this as the Lord has given me direction and as the Lord has opened up our understanding to his word. Uh, Deacon Albert Freeman, Sister B, at least two saints in this church that I know work for the power company in the city. And even when you initially, listen to me carefully, even when you initially are given power to your house, you and I have a responsibility in order to maintain that power. Because when we fail, Lord, help me here tonight. When we fail to maintain our responsibility, even though you may have initially got it turned on, even though you may have initially received the power, the power can be cut off. Sound like I said something tonight? 
I want you to hear the Holy Ghost talk to us tonight. How does the Holy Ghost and its power work in my life? It is activated by my obedience to the word of God. So when I fail to obey God, if I don't repent, God will deactivate the power. Just like the power company will turn your electricity off when you don't maintain your responsibility. Praise the Lord. This is where we must understand that from Genesis chapter 1 and all the way through the Bible, God has always, I want you to hear this very carefully, don't miss this, even if you have to write it down. God has always worked in combination. I call it a divine combination. It has always been the spirit and the word. I said always. Nobody can claim the spirit's power but ignore the word. I mean, it's an insult to the very first opening of our Bible. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, right, moved on the face of the waters. Was that all? No. And God said, manual of instruction. Once the Spirit moves, in order for everything to work like it's supposed to, I've got to be in compliance with the word of God. Yes. Right. Otherwise, having the Holy Ghost will be just like I don't have it at all. Yeah. Let the church shout amen. amen. This is Bible truth that will help you understand how the power works. So again, this is the manual of instruction. There are instructions for overcoming temptations. All right, let's look at the instructions. All right, if you make a note, I encourage you with this. If you got it, you got it. If you don't, get it. Verse number two says, my brother, what? Count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. Let's see if we're sticking with the flow of the spirit tonight in the lesson. One of the initial passages of scripture in tonight's lesson, we went to Matthew chapter 5. And we, we, we looked at the list called the attitudes. Are y'all with me? Now, let's make sure we can connect the dots here. The word of the Lord is systematic when it comes to truth. In other words, there's no contradiction. Jesus said, bless it, bless it, bless it, bless it, bless it. And everything had to deal with spirit. Everything had to deal with attitude, right? Ain't got nothing to do with your carnal situation. Ain't got nothing to do with material possession. It has something to do with your spirit. Got something to do with your attitude. Well, let's listen to God talk to us in James. Verse 2 says, my brother, count it all joy when you fall in the diamond temptation. In other words, what you got to make sure that you keep in check when temptations come is your attitude. Right. Listen to the Holy Ghost talk to you with the word. My brethren, count it all joy. Don't let nothing mess your spirit up. Thank you, Jesus. I wish I had a praying church now. I really do. Whatever we got to go through, Lord, give me a right spirit. Lord, help me that this thing don't get the best of me, that it, it, it contaminates my spirit. Help me not to lose my mind. Help me not to get the wrong spirit. Help me not to act unseemly. What did he tell me to do? He said, count it all joy. What he did not say is that it all, all that you're going through is joy. Can you hear the Lord tonight? 
Can you hear the Lord tonight? God is just, just God is fair. The Lord said, count it all joy when you fall into divers, many, various temptations. Do you see plural there on that word temptation? Because all saints need to understand you're not just going to have one situation. <laughs> and that's all it is to it. Oh, we're going to show it to you with Jesus in a moment. Somebody shout thank you tonight. In case y'all didn't know it, God is a present help. Presently in the world in which we live now, I don't know of a person that ain't having to deal with temptation. I, I don't. Do you? I, I don't know anybody. If, if you look at your neighbor, you look at your brother, you look at your sister, at, at home, look at your family, go to work, you look, look where, where can you look and ain't nobody having to deal with stuff? Come on here. Everybody say, nowhere. We're going to pick that up in just a moment here too. So, instructions for overcome temptation. I want you to notice how God instructs. Count it all joy. In other words, woo! Thank you, Jesus. God says your outlook is what's going to determine your outcome. See, see, the way that you deal with what's going on with you is not the situation in and of itself. It's how are you looking upon your situation. Nigga free man, we talked about this. Uh, this ain't no new illustration, but it helped. Everybody look here at this glass. Is the glass half full or is it half empty? You can ask her either way, right? If you say it's half empty, that can give you a negative slant on the situation. I ain't got much. If I say that the glass is half full, then I put a positive outlook on myself. All I need is just half, a little half more, and it'll be full. Are y'all understanding the situation? Your, your outlook, that's essentially what the Lord is saying in the text. Overcome. This is the manual of instruction. Yes. Right. Well, let's see if we can just get, get a check in now. How many of y'all in your life are having to deal with temptation? Amen. And let's not just go to church and just go through a Bible class, Sunday or services, anything that we have. Let's get help from God. Right, y'all look around at your brother and sister around and say, let's get some help from God tonight. Let's, for real. For real. For real. God says to overcome your temptation, he said, you got to have the right outlook on your temptation first. It is a temptation. But the outlook is counting all joy when you fall into that temptation. Get the right outlook first. Well, help us tonight, Lord. Get the right outlook uh, if you're going to do anything here tonight, can we have church tonight? Yes, sir. It won't hurt nobody's feelings, right? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, whatever trial, test, whatever you may be going through, I want everybody to get a positive outlook on it right now and say, the Lord's going to see me through this. The Lord's going to see me through this. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. God's going to help me through it. God's now, you know what? I want us to pray. I told you we we're going to pray. All right, so I want to get about five of y'all over here. I want to get five of y'all over there getting the sermon. I want about five of y'all in here and then five over there. Something like that. Now. Come on, let's do it now. Do it now. We're going to pray right now. And we're going to pray for one another that God will give us the right outlook on our temptation. That's what we're going to pray for right now. I want you to pray for one another. Lord, whatever my brothers, whatever my sisters, I don't care if you hold hands. Get together. Don't be scared. Yeah. 
I want you to encourage when I say, God's going to see you through your situation. God's going to see you. Whatever test trial you have, God's going to see you through it. Come on, everybody in the house, come on, do it. All right, I want you to take a good, fervent minute. A good, fervent minute. Everybody pray right now for one another. Lord, give us that right outlook. Whatever we're going through, help us to get, give it a divine assessment. Give it a divine assessment. Help me to see it in the eyes of your word. Glory, glory! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hey, hey. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Working patience. 
Is that all right? Now, uh, let, let's give us a little bit more encouragement here. Go to 1 Corinthians 10, verse number 13. 1 Corinthians. Praise the Lord. Overcoming temptations. Overcoming temptations. Chapter 10 and verse number 13 of 1 Corinthians. We, we, we made reference to this verse and, and, and it comes back again to, to strengthen the saints of God. All right? I'm telling you, and this verse will help you in your outlook. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute, but I, I need you to read it. Everybody read aloud. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. How does it read? There have no temptation. Taking you by what? Such as is common to man. You are not going through anything that don't nobody else know about. See, that, that puts you on the path of defeat when you're made to feel that way. If you embrace feelings and statements like that to yourself, you are already on the path to defeat. It's a lie. Word of God said that have no temptation taken you. I don't care what you're going through. He said no temptation. Everybody say no temptation. No temptation is taking you. And if you've been on a pathway of talking to yourself that way and embracing such feelings, tonight is the opportunity to begin to repent. You're going to find out whatever is wrong with us. Everybody look this way, man. I'm going to tell you something that I found out, and I found out in the world. Whatever is wrong with us, I, I mean, I've read the Bible through several times, but I have found out whatever wrong with the people of God, that ain't the issue. If you're wrong, all God wants you to get right. Amen. You know how you get right? Everybody say, repent. Repent. See, he died because we were wrong. Lord have mercy. Somebody shout hallelujah. Might I remind us, I don't care, I don't even say, he died to start with because we were wrong. So you being wrong is not an issue with God. It certainly ain't no surprise. The stigma with God is when we're not honest with him and when we're not humble with him. That's why the scripture said, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, thou wilt not despise. If my faith have not been on the part, I've been wrong. If I've been talking wrong, if I've done wrong, all God wants me to do is repent. Because the word said, if we confess our sins, out somebody. He's what? Faithful. Somebody shout he's faithful. Because we've got to pick that up. In a he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from, watch it now, from all unrighteousness. Now, so we got to understand, to help you in your outlook, understand that and come on, let me tell you something this right now. This is a we we have an active participation about class tonight. Tell yourself, I ain't going through nothing, ain't through nothing anymore, anymore than anybody else. anybody else. I'm talking about on the authority of the word. Now, because if you embrace anything other than that, you're in contradiction to the word. That means the power is going to deactivate. Woo, Jesus. You need to always keep in mind, Samson, the man the spirit. The power deactivated for non-compliance. And I'm telling you, in 2022, that's what's wrong with a whole lot of folk that's in church professing the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is real as it ever was. But the power is only activated when we are in obedience to him. I believe it's Acts chapter number five 
when Luke begins to tell us that the Lord gives the Holy Ghost to all who obey him. All who obey him. If you want, how many of y'all want the power of the Holy Ghost to be activated in you? Yes. Even after 10, 20, 30, 40. Some of us in here have been saved that long, but that don't mean the years is going to make the power active. Y'all yes, better hear what I'm telling you. Because I'm telling you, you can go years down the road professing you got the Holy Ghost and be as weak as water. Yeah. Can't hardly stand in doing nothing. You'll be living like sinners. That's the illustration of Samson. He was just as weak as any other man when he went contrary to the instruction. Just as weak. Here I am, a saint, a child of God, but when I'm not in compliance, I'm just as weak as any other sinner without the Holy Ghost. Right. Let the church say amen. amen. To the word. To the word. All right, let's finish reading that verse. There have no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is what? Faithful, dependable, reliable, trustworthy. He's dependable. He's reliable. He's trustworthy. Who will not what? If it has come to you as a child of God, then what you must have the right outlook with with your circumstance is God has already given you the power to handle it. It's just a feeling any other way you feel. It's just a feeling. No temptation is taking, taking you, no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, dependable, reliable, and trustworthy. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. So I came to tell you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you can handle it. Watch this. Even when you feel like you can't handle it. I come to tell you in the name of the Lord you can handle it. I said in the name of the Lord Jesus you can handle it. I said in the name of the Lord Jesus you can handle it. The 8th chapter of Romans. We are more than conquerors. How? Through him that loved us. All right, we're not suffering you to be tempted above that you're able, but will come on. Uh oh, remember that word that I gave you last week? With, with, with. See, we have to understand that our things as a child of God, we do have to suffer with. God is not going to remove everything out of the way because God wants to reveal His power in our lives. And the power of God is not manifested by us not going through anything. It's manifested by us going through things. This very Bible that we read, that we preach and we teach from, is filled with experiences, testimonies of what saints of old went through. And they become a record of holy scripture for us to build our faith. They were living testimonies. And guess what? God don't want you to be any less than a living testimony of his power. All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, let's pick up something else. We must have faith. Knowing this, back to James. That the trial of our faith work in patience. All right? Verse 4 of James 1 says what? All right. Let patience, patience, patience. Romans chapter 5, just make a note of it. We're not going to, you don't have to turn there. Let me make mention of it. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein, wherein we stand and rejoice, watch this, 
and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Did y'all hear that? But we glory in what? Tribulations. tribulations also, knowing that tribulation, this is Romans 5, tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, because the love of God is shed abroad. Uh-oh. Are y'all listening to the word? Are y'all connected now? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you what. You, you can't deal with this play Holy Ghost that a lot of folk have resort to. We need the real one. Yes. And the real one is the Bible kind. Yes. The Holy Ghost that comes with power. The Holy Ghost that gives you the ability to endure. Yes. The Holy Ghost that can give you the attitude above the fleshly attitude. Because I got a spirit that's above human spirit. Come on, somebody. All right. The Holy Ghost. Now, I want you to give God praise for the Holy Ghost. Right now. We must allow patience to have her perfect work. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, you need to slow down in life. Just slow down. Your mind's racing. You're too much in a rush. You're too stressed. You're too frustrated. You're too snappy. Patience. Jesus said in your patience, God don't allow everything to happen like he wanted to because he's trying to teach you patience. Patience is a virtue. And virtue speaks of moral character. Lord said, I'm trying to put some personality in you. You too mean. You too stubborn. You too set in your ways. You're not flexible enough. Only reason why I'm letting something legal right. is to help teach you patience so I can put some virtue and character in you. Yes. So you learn that you don't live by having your way. Right. Where you tell yourself the only way I'll be happy is if I can have my way. But if I don't feel like it, I just don't do it. Uh-oh. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that the scripture said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's the same old fleshly, carnal, stubborn. Oh, I didn't say that? Oh, he's the same old person set in their ways because that's the way they always be. He didn't say that? I didn't think he said that. He said if any man be in Christ. Uh-oh. Y'all missed that too, didn't you? See, why does these verses come back? Why do we have to have these lessons come back? Because what you heard before, you only heard what you did hear, but you didn't hear what you need to hear. Not in fullness. Because the scripture did not say, therefore, if Christ be in any man. Because maturity in Christ means now I've got to learn to position myself in him. The scripture did not say if Christ be in any man, he's a new creature. The scripture said if any man be in Christ, which means some things are going to happen by my right position and effort toward the Lord. Somebody need to give God praise for the Bible truth. I hear the Holy Ghost saying, play fair with God. I hear the Holy Ghost saying, play fair with God. I mean, the relationship is mutual. God ain't the only one that need to do all the action. Lord bless, Lord touch, Lord heal, solve the problem, come back here, Lord. You ain't God. I mean, who's supposed to be telling who what to do? Y'all pay attention to how church will do we got a whole lot of instruction that we give God. Lord, you're going to have to come and help 
me right now. I mean, Lord, you don't have to come here right now. What? I mean, some of us came up in homes that you weren't allowed to talk bold to your own parents. How do you talk bold like that to God? Don't get offended, y'all. I know we mean well, but sometimes we just flat need to repent. Why do we sound like telling God what he going to have to do? Can I tell y'all what the fact of the matter is? He ain't got to do nothing that you want him to do. Not a single thing. Praise God. It's our effort toward the Lord. We the ones that need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. We the one that need to be saying, Lord, what would thou have me to do? Lord, I need you to move this right now. How do you know you need that move right now? No, you just want it move right now. But we got to mitigate a call and say, I need you to move this right now. Don't get offended, y'all. I know we mean well. I'm just trying to help us. Because sometimes God's people are just out of order. We feel bold in telling God what to do. If you know I'm telling the truth, say amen. amen. Even if it ain't your intention, you need to go back and examine that. I mean, sometimes I'm more into telling God I feel like prayer is such a prerogative of mine that I take the liberty to be that bold with God. And I got a whole manual of instruction that he has given to me. How much of that am I doing? Praise God! No wonder the power is not activated as it ought to be. Praise God! I wonder if we reversed it tonight and we all took on the attitude of saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? I wonder what would happen in our lives. God will make a way of escape. He ain't going to move everything out the way because he's trying to build some character in you. That's the one thing you don't want to change. You are set in your ways and you're comfortable being like you are. I've been that way for years. And wonder why some things don't resolve. God said, I'm going to let enough happen till you learn. Don't be that stubborn. Don't be that stubborn. The Bible says even of Jesus. Listen to this, y'all. He learned obedience. I wish I had a church that knew about it. He learned obedience. How? How the things he went through. We ain't everything that we need to be. So God knows we need to go through some things to keep us humble to pray. Because some of us are too self-sufficient. We're too set in our ways, so God takes that starch out of us. How many of you know God knows how to put you to your knees? Oh, yes, he does. Some of us are so set in our ways, we don't feel like we need nothing to nobody. I don't care. Stop, first of all, stop lying. Yes, you do. You go through enough, you're going to find out how much you can. I don't care if you don't talk to me. I ain't studying, folks. Yes, you are. Stop. Stop it. And part of the reason why attitudes sometimes stay in a bad way. Because you are about it. You just got too much pride to admit it. You don't turn folk off. You don't upset folk. You've been set in your way, now you're envious and jealous because other folk get along better. And you're blaming other folk for treating other folk different from you. And the problem is not them. Y'all know the song used to say, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in need of prayer. I can mean as I want to do, never repent. And then later on, time passed by. And I just sweep that on the uh, like I didn't say anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't ever act on you. I didn't ever mistreat you. I won't buy you, turn up my nose at you, but I ain't mistreat you. Next month, I might come by, smile at you. 
Well, I ain't gonna say I'm sorry when I, did, I mistreated you. I ain't gonna do that. I wanna embrace that old stubborn character, that maiden spirit. Lord have mercy. Yes, that's the prayer. Y'all want to pray, help me pray again? And I'm really serious. But I want y'all to help me say, Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. I told you we're going to pray. All right. Now, so we need to know, K-N-O-W, that the triune of our faith work of patience. All right. I want you to turn to Hebrews 10, 35. Hebrews is before James. Chapter 10. We got to hit this patient just before we get out of here. Got to hit it. Glory to God. Overcoming temptations. All right, verse number 35. Read. It don't sound like we all are reading. All right, we're in Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 35. Come on, get focused now. Everybody read aloud. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. All right, you got to make sure that you have faith. It's necessary. Manual of instruction. You gonna overcome your temptation? You can't excuse yourself. I don't know. I just don't know. I right, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You got to hear what the Lord said. You ain't going to come like that. Stop embracing how you feel. What I'm feeling. I just don't know. I just don't know. Y'all, I'm going to tell you. Like, what I, I'm practicing, and I try to be a practicer uh, of saying right things. You, death and life. Y'all talk back to me tonight. Death and life are what? I mean, was God lying or are we out of focus? Why would he still be saying stuff that we ought not say then? And he said, it's in the power of your tongue. Stop saying stuff you ought not say. Don't talk weakness and wonder why you're weak. Don't talk about feeling bad and wonder why you always feel bad. Is the glass half empty or is it half full? Change your outlook. I want you to hear the Lord say tonight, one of the ways that I'm going to give you to overcome whatever your trials and your tribulations are is you need to change. Your attitude, change. Your outlook. It's not moved the situation. That is so insane. It's not moving the situation. You're the one that need to change. Why you always want me to change everything and everybody except you? Except you. Except you. What's up with that? How long are you going to stay the way you are? Is that just for me to do that? You just want me to fix things because you pray. But you are stubborn as a rock that won't move and bolt. When you gonna change your attitude? I should have fixed your situation a long time ago. A long time ago. Holy Ghost talking to us through the word tonight. Praise the Lord. How to overcome your temptation. All right, 35 says, cast not away, therefore your what? Confidence. Now, verse 36 is the one I want you to get because this is one that many a child of God overlooks. Verse 36, you got to read it loud. Make sure it penetrates. For you have need of patience. All right, go and listen. The trial of your faith, work in patience. Now, watch the harmony of the scriptures. You have need of patience. That what? gave you an answer tonight. You want me to give you the promise. You want me to give you your solution, but you ain't stuck doing my will. The word tonight is after you have done the will of God. Don't count on me fixing nothing. 
and you're stubborn and won't do what I want you to do. But you want to call me to do what you want me to do. But you ignore all kind of instruction that I give you. Time, time, time again. You're stubborn. Set in your way. But you got the nerve to call me. You have need of patience. And the reason why I have not fixed a lot of your situation is because I'm trying to help you. I created the whole world. Ain't no trouble for me to do this or do that. That ain't the issue. I hope y'all hear this word here tonight. That ain't nothing. There's nothing too hard for God. The difficult challenge is with ourselves. That is public enemy number one. If y'all didn't know that, let me remind you. Now, public enemy number one. How much are you willing to change yourself? You should no more expect changes in your life than the change you're willing to make yourself of your life. You can't expect changes in your life pertaining to your life, but no change of your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. You have a need of faith that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise of God. I want you to understand overcoming temptation. You're, the trying of your faith is working patience. God heard your prayer. Brother, sister, God heard your prayer a long time ago. The question is, are you in alignment with the will of God? Yourself. God's not a lollipop God. He's not in the abracadabra. He's not our Houdini on the side. Hocus pocus, abracadabra, poof. He don't do stuff like that. That ain't what prayer is all about. But if you call on Jesus, yeah, he'll answer prayer when? You have made a paper that after you've done the will of God. If we ask anything, oh, I'm glad somebody knows the word. If you ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Y'all see how it all works now? God does hear and answer prayer. Don't let the devil deceive you about your faith God. Well, I pray to see my stuff, nothing ain't happening. No, it don't all work like that. One link of truth. Links with another link of truth. Holy Ghost link with the word. There's a manual of instructions. The question I ask myself, and write this down. I'll get ready to close. Because I ain't going to get through tonight. Don't push me. Don't do it. I'm not going to do it. Never give God a reason not to work on your behalf. Never give God a reason. Make sure that whatever you need God for, you're not in the way. Who are you talking to, Bishop? Every one of us. The word speaks to us about how to overcome temptation. No one is at the trying of your faith, work and patience, but let patience have her perfect work. If God's allowing some things to linger, then you need to be considering, Lord, are you trying to, what are you trying to teach me with this, Lord? That's a prayer I pray. Right. What are you trying to show me with this? You're trying to help me to be better in dealing with things. You're trying to help mold me some more. Lord, help me. Strengthen me. Give me the endurance that I need. Help me to hold on to the faith. Come on, somebody. Now, we're not through, y'all. I'm going to tell you that now. We're not through. God is helping his people. He's talking to me to give us some more word about the wisdom that's coming from above. We got to make sure, brothers and sisters, we're operating by God's direction rather than doing things the way we want to do it. Because God is real. And everything he's given us works. We got to make sure that we're doing things according to his will. If tonight you appreciate the word of the Lord, then would you express to him your appreciation for his work. Lord bless you. Heaven smile upon your Lord righteous face. Come on.